Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I want to explain one game from the 10th round of Chess Olympiad and the game is between women grandmaster Koneru Hampi and women's grandmaster Abdul Malik Zensaya. She is from Kazakhstan. Uh, the importance of opening preparation played a quite important role in this match and I want to make one point here. So let's start. White played the move d4, black played knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3 and c6. So this is semislav structure and now white played the move e3. Again it is known as Meran system in semislav. Black continued with the move knight bd7, quite standard chess. White played the move bishop d3 and d into c4. So this is a typical reaction when white develops his bishop only then black takes on c4. So white has to invest one more tempo in taking on c4. Now black directly played the move b5. Again it's very typical play. And the more commonly played move here is move bishop d3 or bishop e2. So normally white retreats his bishop on d3 or e2. But here uh, Koneru Hampi chose the b3 square. Now this is little bit dubious move but according to the engines. Now the point I want to make is many times we uh, see what is given in the chess books or courses or what engine says. Like if engine says it's a good move we play it. And if engine suggests a line which is dubious we don't play it. But we don't uh, try to understand why it is dubious and why the other lines are better than that. Or how to take advantage of the dubious line if opponent plays it. Now bishop b3 is not that great. But already Abdul Malik uh, Zhensaya was not able to exploit this move. She continued with the move bishop b7. But the right move was to play b4 knight e2 and now bishop b7 and after moves like bishop d6 and castle uh, black is perfectly fine now the importance of uh, importance of the move b4 is that knight is retreated back on e2 and it's very difficult for white to get this e4 move in and e4 is like white's main plan in this structure so this is the problem and black completely equalizes now in the game what happened uh, after bishop b3, black played bishop b7, now white cancelled and black played the move a6. Now see this is like a completely bad move because a6 there is no use of a6 here. Okay the idea is to protect the b5 so that the c5 can be played but in this structure uh, mostly uh, in semislav structures there are two ways to get this c5 move uh, on the board. One is to defend the b5 pawn so that after c5 it stays protected or else move that b, b pawn to the b4 square. So if it moves to b4 then already you can directly play c5 because b5 pawn is not hanging. So in this case again the move should be b4 and knight e2 and after bishop d6 as I suggested in the previous line uh, black is completely fine in this position. In the game black played the move a6, white continued with the move e4 and now actually this line uh, justifies white's bishop b3. Now in this variation, in this position the bishop on b3 is excellently placed. Now already white got e4 and it's ready to push the pawn on e5. Uh, so black plays the move b4 and now white plays the move knight a4. And it looks like e4 pawn is hanging and free. Uh, black took this in the game. Otherwise there is no option like e4 is coming. e5 is coming. So black took on e4. There comes rook e1. And after knight f6. White plays the move knight g5. And you can see the use of this bishop here. Now there could be some sacrifices on either f7 or e7, e6 square. So black plays move bishop e7. And Koneru strikes with the move bishop into e6. Uh, better than this move was the move knight into f7, king into f7, bishop into e6 check, king f8 and after queen b f3, uh, white is way better in this position. Okay, White is a piece down but he managed to get two pawns uh, for the piece 
and what are the compensation for white here opponent's king is stuck in the center rook on h8 is completely out of the game the bishop on b7 is not going to come into the game because c5 cannot be played and white's pieces are very active here so bishop on e6 is excellently placed rook is on open file bishop g5 is coming and it's really a uh, tough for black to improve his position here so hence white has a huge advantage in this position in the game white took on e6 and this is also good but knight into f7 was better move black played the move castle here uh, this variation allows black's king to run away but okay after queen e2 uh, threatening bishop into f7 and then winning the dark square bishop black plays knight d5 it's counter attacking move trying to bail out bishop into d5 bishop into g5 bishop into g5 queen into g5 and simply retreating the bishop back now even a general evaluation of the position white's f3 bishop is the better part of the bishop b7 this is completely bad bishop it cannot be opened here c5 knight a4 is controlling quite nice squares a, uh, c5 and b6 and rook ad1 will come soon so after rook ad8 rook ad1 knight f6 queen e5 queen g6 and knight c5 white is completely dominating the game and later on koneru humpy easily won that game so this game shows us the importance of knowing like how to exploit the dubious lines like it's very easy uh, it's very important for our understanding to uh, prepare lines which we know and which we understand don't go on engines ev evaluation i want to now show one more example the position in front of you is from the game a grandmaster pragyananda versus sindaro jokover uh, he is from uzbekistan this game is from round 10th of chess olympiad now in this position uh, let's see what is going on first bishop on e5 is excellently placed if we count the pawns 1 4 6 black is one pawn down now in the game black took on a2 so he tried to regain the pawn rook into a2 but this proves out to be a mistake in the game so let's see it's quite deep uh, its impact is seen uh, after some moves so after rook into a2 rook into a2 bishop into a2 white plays the move bishop into f6 now this is very important move if we directly go and play the move b3 trying to trap the bishop this is not working because of the move knight into e4 and this is a very nice uh, tactics knight into e4 the bishop gets open and attacks the e5 piece and we don't have any a chance to take on g7 because queen into f2 is also a big threat and with this move uh, black is completely saving himself so first we need to exchange that knight and after bishop into f6 bishop into f6 now we can play b3 and bishop is hanging so now black needs to protect it and he protects it with the move queen a5 so this allows us to take on c6 and at the same time we are giving him double attack so black plays the move rook e6 white continues to check the king and after king g7 plays back to the queen c2 now black plays queen uh, a3 now black is trying to uh, attack the b3 pawn so white continues here with the move e5 now this move uh, attacks the bishop and kind of uh, blocks the bishop's uh, influence on the diagonal so here in this position bishop e7 should have been played uh, and after rook d3 the game would continue but in the game black took on e5 and this turns out to be a mistake white takes on e5 and after rook into e5 here comes a very simple move queen c3 and rook is under pin it's a very deadly pin so black played queen c5 uh, this is quite nice move but we can come back on b2 and attack the light square bishop and there comes the move bishop into b3 now the idea is if we take on b3 then rook into e2 is coming so white needs to first defend the e2 bishop and at the same time we are creating a very deadly threat 
In this position, black plays the move bishop e6. And now it's your turn. You can pause the video and try to find a very amazing continuation, winning continuation for white. So there are actually two continuation. Uh, in the game, white chose the move bishop g4, but oh, of course it is winning and Pragyananda won that game quite easily. But quite a fancy continuation is the move bishop c4. Now bishop c4 attacks the rook two times like this. So black has only one move and that is to play the move king f6. Uh, playing pawn on f6 won't work because of rook into e5, queen into e5 and after takes bishop is hanging. So king f6 and now what? Here comes a very very beautiful move bishop d5. It's a beauty. Bishop into d5 would block the line here and queen into e5 is there. And if queen into d5 this takes away the queen from this diagonal and f f2 pawn is unpinned and now we can play f4 and we are winning the rook back with a winning position of course so this was a quite uh, beautiful continuation i want to uh, i wanted to show the audience later on in the game uh, pragyananda won the game so here we can end this video i hope you liked my uh, explanation thanks for watching